Everybody say conversations with God. That we will be such a lot of hope. Think about the type of conversations that you have with people every day. And first of all, God, is he glorifying you? And is there hope in that conversation? In the joy that you experience, can people experience a hope? When you talk about the challenges, can people still experience a hope in the midst of challenge? They hear you have challenges. They hear and they can see that you have challenges in your life. But, you know, people can speak about something normal. And you can hear in that person's voice, he has issues. Or she has an issue. And they don't speak about the issue. But you can hear it. <laughs> it's just there. Hello? And God want to bring us breakthroughs, my brother, my sister. May there be hope in your conversations. Because if Christ is there, if Christ is in, and then through your mouth, from the overflow of your heart, your mouth will speak. And what is in your heart? If Christ, the hope is in you. If hope is alive in your heart, then hope will come through your mouth. And not only when you preach about hope or when you speak about hope, but in the way that you give your life. And so as you go from this camp to say, God, help me that my eyes will show to people I have hope. Because if they can see hope in my eyes, it means they can see you in my eyes. Are you with me? What do they see in your eyes? The windows of the soul. What do they see in your eyes? Oh, and things can come your way. A lot of stuff can come your way. And you can feel you have the right to be frustrated. You have the right to be negative. You have the right to compromise. You have the right. And you will give that to who? But if you have a brother, a sister, a friend, I hope that you can give them hope. Because God has an excellent future for that man, for that woman. And don't you go and stand between that man's future and him. Because of negativity, because of issues, because I don't know how to relate. I don't know how to be in a healthy way with people around me. God wants to give us the breakthrough. Why? Because he wants you to prosper. Because he wants you to see the hope and the excellent future that he has for you. But will we Bring one another down so that in our soul we cannot see the hope. Because there's too many issues. Too many things that the church will keep themselves busy with, with themselves. That they cannot see the greater, the bigger picture of so much more that God has for them. But as they seek the kingdom, not manipulate. As they seek the kingdom, the rest will follow. God is a good God. The rest will follow. What will follow is you will be utterly fulfilled. What will follow is not necessarily four million dollars. No. God want to provide for you in that way, let him do it. And let the four million be your servant for the kingdom purposes that God has for your life. So let it be so. May the billions come into the kingdom and may it be the servant and not the curse. Not the curse in the church to take them away from Father's plan for their lives. Hello. Are you with me? Let it be so. But may we be in such a level of maturity that we are able to receive that. Are you with me? May we grow in maturity in such a way, my brother and my sister, that you will bring hope to the nations. Hope to the nations. In the time of COVID, the strongholds of demonic oppression, of demonic depression and negativity and this and that, all those stuff, Hello, you better run. <laughs> Mommy is coming. <laughs> Sit, that's the best. <laughs> if all else fails, just go and sit. <laughs> so, where are we now? Okay. Oh, man. So that when you and the people around you speak about something, then you know your heart is not split more. 
There's not more chachas in your heart. When you and somebody had just time together, you just talked about the weather and whatever, but you feel refreshed. They talk about the spirit of a man that refreshes and, and stirs the spirit of another man. Die geest van man wat die ander man verkwik. Because spirit connect with spirit. When God touches your life, it's not because he touched me here or he touched me there or he touched me there. When he touched you, you will not be the same. Hello. And when your spirit is reborn, we had body, soul, spirit. Hello. Hello. But now this soul can connect with that soul. This soul in this issue can connect with that soul with the same issue. And you are friends, man. You are my best buddy. We feel the same. We just, we just connecting the same. But you're connecting in a way where two or more agree about the rubbish. It will come to pass for you. You sit with your rejection issue in your soul and you'll find a friend that also sits with his rejection issue and soul will connect with soul. But man, oh man, if we can live, that my spirit will connect with your spirit. My spirit that is perfect in spite of all my issues or in spite of all my weaknesses, in spite of all the things that I must still work through. If my spirit that is perfect can connect with your spirit that is perfect, doesn't matter your mistakes, your failures, your, your weaknesses, doesn't matter my failures, my weaknesses, I will be strengthened in the Lord by your perfect spirit. But we need to grow to get such a life. But it can happen. That's why when you can leave that WhatsApp, when you maybe voice note, maybe more than just the WhatsApp, because with voice also there's, your voice carries something. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not. That when they can pick up something when you spoke. When you spoke, there was a spirit dimension. Are you with me? There's a spirit dimension coming with it. So you can speak. But if I have a spirit dimension of temptation, if I have a spirit dimension of, of a destructive attitude, that what I do, I'm not building relationships. I'm destroying relationships. When somebody is here, then I position myself in this way in the relationships. When that person is here, I position myself in this way in the relationship. I flow like a pawn, whatever. Wherever the devil wants me, in whatever way, in relationships. I don't say it's the devil, no. But if it's only just soul and soul connection, personality and personality. This I like, this I don't like. And my relationships are based on that. Paul says, I want to know nothing among you except Christ and him crucified. Paul says, I don't know you after the flesh anymore. That means, I don't want to first think about your weaknesses and about my weaknesses. I first want to think in the spirit who you are in Christ and who am I in Christ. I want first of all to see you in Christ before I see the thing that you are causing. Amen. When you can look in that way, hope will be an overflow in your life. Hope will be an overflow. That's where people say, people can drain you. Yeah, that's true. But when you first have a spirit dimension, that from your spirit you see what Holy Spirit is showing you about that other person, it cannot drain you to hear that God says, I'm excited about them. Oh, Lord, you're excited about them. Uh -uh. If you understand spirit dimension in that way. So may God help you to look at one another. That guy that, that mocks you. That guy that ignored you. That lady that ignored you. That people, those people that didn't compliment you. Those people that didn't do this, didn't do that. They didn't accept you. They turned their back on you. Or... They're just complimenting this other guy. Ah, you can go on and go on and go on. And as soon as you said, you sort it out, the devil stand back and let you sort it out. And so that you can feel, yeah, everything is sorted out. Praise the Lord. And then he comes back and just put the, the pieces in a different way on the table. And he stands back and you see what you do now. 
very amused at what you're going to do. And you pray, and God, as a faithful God, will help you to get the breakthrough there. And then he come and he organizes the whole thing again with other people. All of this, in the way that you will take offense about this guy or about that guy. Or you look at people and you hunger. You have a hunger for God. God, what, what are you showing me even through this person? But then also not just, I want to say, spiritual that you're the whole time thinking, what is God showing me about this person? What is God showing me through this person to me? But where you just can start to enjoy people. When you grow in maturity, you can start to enjoy people more. Life becomes simpler and the issues become less an issue in your life. You're not compromising. I'm not talking about compromising. I'm not talking about compromising. Maybe prioritizing to see how God sees it. Are you with me? In that place, we can give one another hope. But if we must give the nations hope, but with our conversations with one another, with our interaction with one another, we're leaving one another hopeless. We have issues to have hope because of things that we are going through in our families or in our marriages or if, with our friends, with our family, with our brothers and sisters and people at the work. And, and as long as the enemy can stir the pot like that, nothing can happen. You will just go all around, all around till you die. No, it will not be so anymore in Jesus' name. No, no, it will not be so anymore in Jesus' name. But we, when we come together, hope will be stirred. Hope will be stirred. If God has put us together as a family, as a, as a spiritual family, as a spiritual house for him, that means that when we come together, in the cell group, when you are with, a, with one another, in a, in a voice note, in when we worship God together, hope is stirred. Hope is stirred. Because when we lift him up, it's saying, we lift up the living hope. We lift up hope. His name is hope. Hope is lifted up when we lift up Jesus Christ, our living hope. Are you with me? That's why it's important. Make sure that yes, you, you worship God through your lifestyle. But with that song, just as I'm thinking about now, I think I gave about two or three people such a word today. Make sure that you sing. Make sure you put the song on your lips. The song in your heart, it must be on your lips. It must be on your lips because you must hear it. Because God wants to hear it on your lips. Are you with me? God could have thought, he could have thought, let there be light. His thoughts must be able to be good enough for light to just arise. Because God thought about it that light must be there and light was there. He thought that there must be night and day and there was night and day. Hello? Uh -uh. He decided that he will say God said, let there be light. And where God made us in his image, what you say, like Proverbs 18, life and death in the power of the tongue. Don't be a fool. And we will not call one another fools, according to the word. Hello. When you say this to your brother, and when you say that to your brother, and when you say this to your brother, Oh, where's that scripture again? Matthew 5. Um, Matthew 5. When you say to your brother, Raka, ne? and when you say to your brother, you fool, you stand guilty before the council, and then you stand guilty before the, who say in English? Ah, not one of you know. Okay. Okay, what, it, what he's talking about is it's not like when you say to somebody you stupid fool but jesus said now you stand guilty in the court we're going to take you to court you know where you stand guilty the devil is taking you to court 
And when the devil can take you to court, then he says, you know, that man is standing guilty in the way that he speaks to somebody else. And because he stands guilty, I, the devil, have right to destroy according to his words. I have the right to destroy according to his words because you stand guilty. That hell and what hell represents can come to you and have right in you because you were found guilty. Are you with me? Now, if you can found guilty and that the devil says, I have legal right based on your words, based on your words, what you say about him, I have legal entrance to, towards him. I cannot get into him because he's not open for me yet. But thanks for the entrance that you gave me to him with the curses that you speak over that person. You're the one standing guilty. But because you're guilty, I have entrance. Me, the devil. Are you with me? You call people names. You say he's stupid or he's this or she's that. Why you curse the one that is made in the image of God? Who gave you the right? The word says, you stand guilty. And the devil can call your name to claim legal, legal rights. No. The devil doesn't have to have anything on us. So the, the crisis will be if the children of God would say about one another what God is saying about them. That will be hell for the devil. <laughs> that will be a hell of a crisis. If you're going to start to say what God is saying about your brother and your sister and the church of Christ, hello, and the nations and what God wants to do in the nations, that will be hell to the devil. Because he has only legal right if you give him the legal right. Because in Christ, you're more, 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 more than a conqueror. Victory is living in you, and you are the living because of the result of victory. Because of the result of the victory, you have a life. Amen. Where you go, there goes a proclamation of victory. Christ has won. Christ has won. Christ has won. One. So the devils look at you and you walk with Christ. You're not perfect, but you believe in what he has done for you. You respect what he has done for you. You appreciate what he has done for you. Hello, you're not perfect, no. But where you go, the enemy here, Christ has won. Christ has won. And he cannot hear that. He cannot, he cannot hear the truth. He cannot stand in the midst of the Darkness cannot fight the light. So let the light be on your lips. Let your light, the light be in your walk. Let the light be there. I'm not asking you to be perfect. You, we are not able. But by faith, we can really respect who he is. And respect him in our lives. You can have the guts to follow him. Hello? And where you go? Light, 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 light. Light. Now think of all the words of who you are and what you have. And then when you walk, maybe, maybe tomorrow, or this week, or this year, or somewhere, you say that word over and over as you walk. As you walk. Hello? Love. Love. You want to kill that guy? You say, love, 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 love. <clears throat> we'll love you till you die. No, no, not like that. <clears throat> Are you with me? But may God help us. Aha, please, man. Aha, please. You take the word of hope and you stir your soul in it. Spirit, your spirit speaking to your soul. You wrote that letter and I pray that Holy Spirit will guide you how to do that in a lifestyle. David did it and he became like lifestyle. As a lifestyle, you from your spirit supposed to speak to your soul. As part of a lifestyle. Because what you speak, when you speak from your spirit, is perfect. It's beautiful. It's honoring God. It's clear. It's clean. 
It's good when you speak from your spirit. It's pure. It's beautiful in his sight. Now speak forth the beauty that is already in you. That clear, beautiful voice that is inside of you. The voice of your spirit. That beautiful voice with the voice of God united. Where two or more agree. Holy Spirit testify in my spirit. The spirit of God, his voice and my voice. The voice of my spirit. If I'm in unity with that. Hello. Now it's God and my spirit agreeing with the word of God. You know, three. Three witnesses. Hello. The word, my spirit, the Holy Spirit, we agree. Now in my soul, I have this issue of getting angry. And that guy has also that issue of getting angry. So we can agree to disagree, to have a <clears throat> with one another. But if I have this unity between my spirit, Holy Spirit, and the Word of God, this thing will not stand. Even for that moment, there's an agreement. There's an agreement. Because I also feel irritated because they are taking too long in the service, you know. No, not one of you. I'm just talking in some other church. No, not about you guys. Um, that's nothing. <laughs> Let it just go away. Don't, 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 don't go with that. You won't believe it. How at the same time the enemy can bring in certain thought patterns. And what is the strategy that the devil, if the devil could ever pray for, uh, uh, what, he, what, he, what he hope will happen is that they will agree. Have you ever seen that in a place suddenly there's just major depression in that whole place? And it is a spiritual onslaught. But the breakthrough is not if I can put the depression in your emotions and in your emotions and in your emotions and depression there. But the breakthrough for the enemy is when he can build a city. Is when you and you and you and you agree in negativity. Then it becomes a stronghold. And then the enemy can walk in. Because you are building him a city. You are building him a place. No, it cannot be like that. Because the truth, when you and you and you and you and you tonight now agree about the word, about what we are saying, so it will be before my Father in heaven. And we as a spiritual house, living stones, we are building in the spirit. That what is from God. That's why prayer is building a wall against what the enemy wants. And this is what God wants. And we are building that wall. We are building that wall. We are speaking forth what is from God, what is not from God. Because we can know how to work, walk in the spirit and not in, not in the flesh. And you speak forth in prayer. You speak forth in faith. You speak the word over the nation, over the situation. And you are building that wall like Nehemiah. Now, ah, that's my day word. Like Nehemiah. You're building that wall. For who? For God's people and for his city. Because God's people is his home. You do it for God's people. Why? Because you, you're building your father a home with Jesus Christ. But I always do this for the people. You're doing it as if unto the Lord, yes. But you do it for the people and you do it with the people because you are building your father a home. It's not first about you sort it out or not sort it out. There will always be some stuff. But choose to reject that thing, that feeling of rejection. Turn your back on it. Doesn't mean it didn't exist, but uh, humiliate it, if I can say like that, by don't by not focusing on it so much, but not by not finding that so precious this rejection that I got from this guy when two years ago he did this to me, and from then now up till today I cannot trust the guy, or a girl, or a this or a that, whatever. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Hope is in the house. And hope in your conversations. May your spirit stir the spirit of another man. May when you speak, they bring a stirring 
in the spirit of the other man. But when you speak with rejection, when you speak with rejection, it will stir that other person into more rejection. Are you with me? That's how people will just find one another. They can convince one another about a lot of rubbish, wherever in the world. And the devil makes sure that they can connect with one another because as soon as they can connect with one another, a stronghold can be established. A stronghold can be established. So when you know, I'm struggling with this thing, and I have now really issue with Leander. And David, you have also a heaven of an issue. No, you cannot have a heaven. You have a hell of an issue with Leander. He's playing it. I know that you are struggling now with him. Hello? If I know you have a weakness about Leander in some other area, and I find myself, also, I also know I have a type of issue with him. I better have the wisdom of God and not be stupid to go and speak to him now. Because I will not help him and he will not help me. If I love him, I will not speak to him now about it. I will go to somebody that I know is mature enough with objectivity that will have the guts to tell me straight to my face, this is not right what you are doing. Somebody that will not play around for my favor or for the relationship. But wants to respect Christ in the relationship. That means he will speak to me the truth. I want that guy in my life. I want that leader. I want that sister. You with me? Because I, can, I cannot be tricked into this. I have this thing and it just so, by the way, I was led that I must... That I and David, we are speaking together about this. Yeah, yeah. We really have this temptation for Mandrax, though. And uh, I wonder about this and this and this and this and this. Ah, uh, let us be careful. Are you with me? The devil can plant the seed. And he can be, and he's going to be, Phew. but if you can, if you hold the seed and you go to somebody with the same seed, the enemy gets really excited. And he starts to have faith in you that you will take the contaminated seed and together with that guy with the other contaminated seed, a stronghold will be established. Hope in your conversations. Not destroy one another in your conversations and build something against the kingdom of God and for a house for hell. No house for hell in my life. In Jesus' name. Let's say no house for hell. In Jesus' name. Okay. But we two together, we will build our father's home. Okay. We're going for a, for a landing. I want us to pray in, uh, in a few groups if we will be able to do that. Give me a time signal. Now I say, all right. <clears throat> when I, hallelujah. The Lord is good. Amen. 1 Peter 3 verse 15, that's the only one I'm going to take further. Please write that down, 1 Peter 3. That uh, we find right at the back. 1 Peter 3 verse 15. But in your hearts, but in your hearts, revere Christ, appreciate him honor him. Everybody say, appreciate, appreciate. Honor, honor, respect Christ in your heart. Respect him as Christ, as Lord. Always be prepared, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Always. Where do you get that hope for? But they will not ask you where you get that hope from if you don't show the hope, if you don't believe the hope, if you don't walk with the hope. Nobody will ask you. They will just ask, are you okay? <laughs> That's also okay in the sense of if you're going through somebody, through something, in your life, yes, we must be there for one another. Uh, yeah, yeah. But if there's nobody asking you about the hope 
that they see in you. You must ask, Holy Spirit, show me hope. Show me Jesus Christ as my living hope. That people will look at me and they will feel, I will find answers with that person. If I really have an issue, I can really go to that person. If I really in a, in a struggle, that person will speak the truth in love with me and they will pray with me. Hello? May you be such a person. Amen. But that you will show forth the hope, Jesus Christ. Why? Not because you feel different sometimes. No, but you decided that Christ is the center of your life and he is called your eternal hope. And because you believe he's the center of your life, you will show forth eternal hope. Hope that has eternal value. Let's just quickly go with that again. But in your hearts, so where? In your hearts, revere, respect, adore, honor Christ as Lord. Christ as the Lord. You honor him, Christ, as Lord. What does that mean? Lord is what he says goes. No argument, nothing further to say, conversation over. I take this word, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Christ as Lord. And the more I see Christ as Lord, the less argumentative it gets. The less time before obedience. The less feeling sorry for myself why I cannot be faithful in what I was called to do. The more I see him as Lord, the more the fear of God will be on me. And that commander-in-chief, the Lord, he has a heart. And his family is his army. And for us, many times, that the two don't come together. But his family is the army. And his army is the family. And to put the two together, sometimes it's not so lacquer for us. How do you do that? But God wants to open it up for us, my brother, my sister. As if you understand Christ, that means the anointed one. The son of God that is anointed. I will respect him that he has the final say. That I cannot start an argument with him. I cannot wara wara with him. I cannot hear him saying this through the word and then I still go on. No. If he's my Lord and your Lord is speaking and the commander says to you, we are moving from this city to that city in Ukraine. And that soldier thinks, I don't know if we must do that. Let me first think about it. And then all the troops go and this guy is standing here. That's absolutely ridiculous. Hey, are you with me? So let us not do that in our Christian walk anymore in Jesus name. It will not be. Revere Christ as Lord. Always, oh, everybody say always. always. Be prepared. Be prepared. Uh, will we say we are always prepared? I'm always prepared. <laughs> to speak about the hope that is living in me. But the test is the fact that they will ask you about the hope. It's set in such a way as if that is obvious. It's supposed to be obvious that people can see you have a hope that is not in a normal person. Peter is speaking to the church in such a way as if he's saying, he's not even telling the guys, now Now you must start to live in such a way so that people can see that you have hope. No, that's obvious. <laughs> he just says, be prepared anytime to speak to anyone about the hope that they've seen. In you Paul believes Peter believes that they will see the hope in you because you are living such a lifestyle that people can see there's a hope in you and the rest of the guys in the city they don't have such a hope who are you and why you live with such a stability with such a hope with such an expectation about the future that's all definition about hope hey why can you have such an expectation about the future why can you ex be excited about the future? Why can you be in a place of stability and not stress and fear and think of crisis management? Why? Because that's your lifestyle. He don't ask, he's not asking the church to have that lifestyle. 
he believes that they have that lifestyle and that that's obvious thing. He's, he's moved, he moved to the next phase and say, be prepared for everybody to see your walk of hope. Be prepared to tell them, to explain to them why you have such a hope. We're going to grow in this in this season. The church is going to grow in this. It's a prophetic word for the churches in the nations. It's a prophetic word because hope needs to be established. The people, so many will stand ashamed of what they hoped for and hoped in and called their hope, called their security, called their future. But nothing of a future, nothing of stability, nothing is safe, nothing is stable unless it's in Christ. Unless it's in Christ. Are you still with me? Okay. Um, I'm just going to put this last thing there. I said it was the last verse. It was the last verse uh, of the previous 15 minutes. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Have hope. Okay. <laughs> that you will survive. <laughs> okay. We have our one that we talked about. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Everybody say 13, 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Amen. Now, after all the stuff, if you can do all these things in your life, and you have not love, it means nothing. And then Paul explains love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is this, 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 this. All this stuff. And at the, at the end of the day, love rejoices over truth. Love rejoices with the truth. Love rejoices with the truth. Your love, your emotions will always be safe when you link it with truth. But with my emotions, I believe rubbish that she rejected me. That he, he, he did that. That he did that to me. And I believe a lot of rubbish. And then my emotions cannot stay stable. It, it cannot be safe. But you know, it will be safe if it's surrounded by truth. Re love rejoices in truth. So when you love people, you love your God, you love yourself, you're excited about the word. You're excited about your future. You're excited about what God is saying to your friend, your, your enemy, your whoever. You're excited about what God is saying to Freyes, Front, EFF, ANC, ACDP, whoever. You're excited that there's a truth that God has for each man on this earth. And you're excited. It doesn't mean you need to pray for every person on this earth. It's just saying your emotions and your passion is safe in truth. Let's write that down. My passion is safe in truth. And that's even with so many people with inner healing. That's where the healing comes. When the truth is accepted. Because the truth will set you free. And it's with his word. He sent forth his word and he healed them. Sent forth his word and he healed them. Love rejoices always in the truth. When the love of God will... Dwell in you more, 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 more. You will be excited about the word. If you're not excited about the word, say, God, help me. Help me. So that Romans 5.5, 5, Romans 5.5, 5, you remember your 5.5. 5. The love of God is poured out in my spirit through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come and pour out the love of the Father in my life, please. Okay, so that at the end of the day, yes, I will rejoice in truth. But there will be a passion about truth. Amen. And truth will protect me. Truth will protect me. So, but at the end of the day, three remains. It is hope, faith, and love. Remember we talked about this? We said the foundation. There's five scriptures that we wanted to go into. We're not going into that. Okay. The foundation is love. That is not just a story. It's actually a lot of scriptures around that. That foundation is the love. And because the love is poured out in our hearts, that's why we have hope. Poured out from heaven, Jesus Christ on the cross. Perfect, perfect sacrifice. Perfect demonstration of God's awesome, awesomeness in his love. And he's no cheap love. It cost him everything. 
No cheap love. We can sit in church and we can hear a scripture about love and we can hear John 3, 16 and the enemy wants to make sure we see it as, we don't say it's cheap. But how much does it stir you? How much does it do to you when you take the word and you hear it and you put it there? What value do you give it? If it wasn't cheap, his love, I will not handle it in a cheap way. I will not deal with it in a cheap way. I will not hear it in a cheap way. Are you with me? May God bring us into love relationships that's precious. And when you understand love, how clear love can be, and that from real godly love there is hope, then you will have hope in your relationships. You will have hope in your conversations. You will have hope in your holiday. You will have hope in your future. You will have hope in that what God has for you. So the three remains. Hope, faith, and love. We talked about the boat, and we're not going to go there anymore. And um, all I'm saying with that, may you absolutely be driven by his love. So that from your unshakable hope that's living in you, Jesus Christ, you can step out in faith in that what you believe God has for you. But when you see it doesn't happen, don't be deceived to be so disappointed that you give up hope. It's impossible to give up hope unless you give up Christ and you ask him to live your life. And you know, it is not necessarily that it's going to leave you. Because he said, I will keep you. <laughs> so if you in a tantrum would ask him to leave you, he's not necessarily going to leave you because he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And I will be true to myself, who I am. Even if we are not faithful, God is faithful, the word says. You with me? So you can, can be in a place where, yes, you've given your life to Christ. And then you can go through a lot of shaking. Hey, God will not leave you. Because he's faithful to himself. He cannot be unfaithful to what he said. Unfaithful to himself. He's your father. He's your best friend. He's the one that is there for you. Amen. Amen. Let's just bow the heads. Can we just focus on God? Can we focus on God? Bow the heads. Thank you, Father, that you come and you touch every man, every woman in this place. Oh, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will come and you pour out the love of the Father in every heart. As you said in your word, you will do. You said you will pour out the love of the Father in every heart of your children. Come and do that, Holy Spirit, please. Establish this perfect, clear, clean, genuine love in our hearts. God, so that from that place of beauty, every man and woman here will be driven into that what you have for us. That's our prayer, Lord. And so that from that place, hope will be established, Lord. We take that tonight and we will move with that. So that tonight and tomorrow we will enjoy life because we have an eternal hope. We will enjoy life because we have an eternal hope. Thank you that we are safe. Our hearts are safe in your perfect love because we choose to rejoice in the truth of the word. Not to rejoice in what this guy is saying about that one, about the enemy, what the enemy or my flesh is saying about myself. No. I will rejoice in the truth about my life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You give me that. And you show me in the word who I am. And that I can rejoice in who I am according to your word. Rejoice in who you are. Rejoice in who my brother and my sister, who they are in you. Rejoice about my future because in my future I see truth. I stand on the prophetic word of truth 
about my future. I look through truth into my circumstances. I look through truth into my weaknesses. I look through truth into my success. The success is not my rejoicing, but the truth in my success is my rejoicing. That's what I choose tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Father, in such a way I will have a house, I will build a house on the rock. And the storm will come so that you can brag about the foundation, Jesus Christ, in my life. But help me to understand the process. Thank you, God. Have mercy on each one of us, your practical help. Have mercy on us as we establish this. We trust you for that in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Amen. Amen.